Hello everyone, welcome to this morning's webinar entitled Reflect, Rethink, Reset, presented by the wonderful Marie Oakes, founder of Trend Academy. My name is Neve. I'm the senior content producer here at Hive and I'm filling in for Suzanne today. I just have some brief housekeeping to go through and then I'll hand straight over to Marie. I'm sure if you've attended any of our previous webinars, you'll know some of this, so please bear with me. Firstly, we are live, so please be patient if there are any technical hiccups or problems, but hopefully we will manage to avoid that. Secondly, the chat function is open, so please do use it and say hello. It would be great to know where everyone's dialing in from today, so please let us know. If you have any questions throughout the presentation, please drop these in the questions tab, and I'll be able to put these to Marie at the end of the session. Finally, we do have some interactive polls for you to participate in. It would be great to know what you think of the webinar series so far, so please do fill these out. And with all that out of the way, I'm delighted to hand over to Marie and hear all about reflecting on our current circumstances and building resilience. Marie, over to you. Thank you. Thank you, Nee, for that lovely inter introduction. I can see we've got lots of lovely people. We've got Malaysia, we've got Lincolnshire, Barcelona, London. Welcome, everybody, and thank you for joining today. Um, yes, yeah, so today um, we're going to be talking about um, resilience. You know, what is it? Why is it so important? And how you can cultivate more of it for yourself. Uh, for those of you that don't know, um, my name is Marie Oakes and I am a former fashion designer. So I've worked for Alexander McQueen, for Mulberry, for m and um, Topshop, um, and I'm now a wellbeing speaker. Um, so I now work with, with companies and teams um, to help them uh, with their wellbeing and increase their resilience. And I'm also the founder of the Trend Academy, um, where we help um, people do the same, help people navigate their way into the fashion industry and, and we help and support uh, fashion businesses too. Um, and I'm delighted to, to be here today to really talk about um, you know, what's been happening in the last few months, um, how we're all feeling um, and how we can really reflect and start rethinking and start resetting our lives for the better. So I'm going to move on, um, jump in straight with the first slide. Um, so, yeah, I think, you know, the last few months, definitely four months for all of us has been a world has been turned upside down you know it's been a real challenging time for all of us it's been a real roller coaster of emotions definitely you know I felt that right from the beginning of you know to fear to anxiety to, to stress to feeling alone feeling isolated um, and then kind of moving through you know as we kind of have that acceptance that you know this is happening um, you know and how do how do we move forward from this and I think a lot of us you know are probably in that stage now where um you know, we are starting to move forward, you know, shops are opening, some of you are going back to work and your businesses are opening again, you know, but it doesn't mean, you know, that's necessarily going to be business as usual. And we've gone through all of these emotions and I think, you know, and that's okay, you know, it's okay to have felt all of those emotions and it's okay to still feel like that. You know, I think, you know, I speak a lot to um, fashion industry experts and thought leaders and people about resilience and actually at the moment, you know, some people, the most scariest thing and the most anxious thing and people are more worried about coming out of, you know, the coronavirus and coming out of lockdown than they were necessarily going through it. You know, what does it look like? You know, how are we go, you know, what does the new normal look like? What does that look like for us and for our businesses? And I think, you know, we've, we've kind of been under that enormous amount of pressure and that fear, um, you know, not just the fear of our health, um, but, you know, the fear of, you know, our maybe income being disassipated, um, you know, our customers might be disappearing, you know, events have been cancelled, um, you know, and that's really tough to deal with. That's really hard um to kind of have that and I think when when we you know when we feel fear you know we don't thrive it's very hard to thrive and flourish when you feel fear and our brains are function to really spot um those threats and kind of keep us alive you know but we you know we've been under a huge amount of pressure for quite a few months now you know it's very difficult to sustain that amount of pressure and stress you know without there being some kind of damage um and I think um you know, look and you know, speaking to people, I've been doing a fashion podcast as well, and speaking to thought leaders and fashion experts of, you know, and I think what I've taken from that, and also the research that I've done in done on resilience for my own um, journey, is you know, some people thrive, but some people struggle, and some people disconnect when we we face crisis and we face challenge. And I think the thing with resilience is, 
and I certainly found that in, in my story in my my career which I'll, I'll talk to you a little bit about later is that you know you don't know how resilient you are until you need to be resilient uh, which is the crazy thing you know if you're going into a challenge and you're going into a situation you don't know necessarily um, that you are that resilient and I think the only way you can do that is to then start looking at how you can build that resilience um, and I think you know one of the hardest places for all of us um, and definitely I've found this in the last few months is to really find that balance you know that inner calm of you know that realistic of you know things aren't aren't great and you know business is, is, is struggling and you know all of that um, to worry about you know money coming in and paying the bills to to actually still being able to be focused um, I think that's you know I've really struggled that one you know some days are good some days are bad where you know how do you kind of manage that those fears and that emotions but still stay focused and still be able to apply that to your business um, and, and move forward um, you know I think as well it's like it's, it's looking after ourselves as well because you know I think a lot of us have you know probably in the last few months really focused on you know what do our customers need how are we going to pivot our business um, you know thinking about everybody else but what about us you know I think we kind of have to be the most important thing in this equation you know if we're not okay our businesses aren't okay you know if we can't thrive our businesses will not thrive um so i think it's looking at this next one and i've definitely felt like this in in, in a way where you know we, we kind of running on empty some of us would be running on empty um especially if you're running your own business or you know you've, you've been working harder than ever i've definitely been working harder than ever um you know and 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 feeling that kind of pressure you know we're overworked we're over, overstressed um you know how do how do we deal with that how do we recover um and you might not be feeling like this you might have had this time you know you've been thriving um but you know you, you kind of have to manage those emotions somehow and have to kind of manage what's what's been happening you know if we don't take time to prioritize our recovery and prioritize how we are then we're never going to reach our potential you know you're going to kind of be in that constant state of burnout you know how do you move forward you know if you're working really, really hard you know 16 plus hours a day in your business um you know and now think you know thinking god you know things are going back to some kind of normality i have to be on the top of my game how do you keep going with that you know how do you manage all of that and i think um that's what I want to really want to talk to, to you all about today is, you know, it's it's how do we move forward? How do you manage those emotions? How do you manage those fears? You know, so you can come out of this OK, but you can also learn to cope with change and cope, cope with crisis going forward. And I think we're, you, you know, moving on to the to the next slide is, you know, when you when you're feeling like that, you know, we still have to perform. We still have to be creative, strategic, productive. And it's really hard sometimes, you know, if you don't have that mental space, you don't have that mental capacity and you are burnt out and you're not, you know, you've been reacting and reacting. You know, I remember being working as a fashion designer and it used to scare the life out of me going into the office or you know, if I was I had my own trend consultancy business as well. And, you know, going into sitting in my office you know, on a Monday morning with a blank piece of paper going, I can't be creative. I can't design because I had so much going on in my head and I, I wasn't um, coping very well in my career, which I'll talk to you a little bit about um, about later. Um, so that's really hard. You know, where do those ideas come from? Because actually, you know, if you're not if you're not well and you're not um, thriving and you're not looking after yourself, you can't be creative and you can't be productive. Um, and some of you might be feeling like that now. You might feel like you literally have an empty gas tank and you don't know what to do. Um, so and that's really where resilience comes in. Um, you know, we're talking about um, lockdown you know lockdown i think has been a real chance for all of us to kind of do some kind of reflection um you know it's definitely paused and, and made us stop it's kind of forced us to stop you know when do we ever get that time where we can actually take a step back from our businesses from our lives to to maybe have a think and go well you know what really matters to me you know what is it um that is important to me you know i mean i'm having conversations with businesses and they're saying you know really taking a step back and saying you know why did i set my business up in the first place what is it you know what is it that's getting me out, out of bed in the morning you know i've got some friends you know that are working in the city and going do you know what i'm done you know i don't want to work in the city i want to go and move out into the country and that might mean that they give up their businesses um you know or, or having a business and they're going you know do you know what it doesn't make me happy anymore i don't get any joy from it um so i'm, I'm gonna have a look at an exit strategy and do something completely differently um, and, you know, apparently I was watching Ben Fogel on the news the other day and the Explorer and he was saying that apparently four in ten of us 
want to give up our jobs and you know go and live on an island um and you know we are it's kind of given us that time and i think it's been an, in a nice time in a way you know if you, you, you've had that space to really sit back and think you know what is really important and reevaluating and um, what really matters and we are kind of changing those habits and behaviors you know i'm definitely i've changed um you know how i live my life um i'm much more structured i have much more of a routine i work from home i don't know if some of you might do the same you know and that can be quite isolating um so i've learned you know i used to go and sit in coffee shops that was kind of how i um you know could be creative and could find you know i not, almost needed this noise going around me to kind of feel part of something so then i could kind of relax and then then be productive but i've had to learn other ways to do that and actually silence for me has been a really big thing that i've rediscovered and i've had to um you know learn to work in a different way which we all have but i've also done brilliant things you know i've started cooking and i've been planting things in my garden which is brilliant i've been reconnecting with nature and you know and and listening to podcasts and webinars that i've been putting on and you know listen to music and stuff and i think it's brilliant you know i've had really found that i've had much more joy in my life and a lot of us are doing that a lot of us are cultivating better habits and better, better behaviors um and we're quite enjoying that um and you know it, it moves me on to you know i was watching a webinar um actually i was listening to a podcast sorry um a couple of weeks ago and it was by a guy called Dr. Chattery. And I don't know if you know him, he's such a lovely guy. And he's a he's a British physician. Uh, he's an author, a TV presenter. Um, and uh, he, his TV show was Do Doctor in the House. I don't know if any of you know them. He's got this brilliant podcast um, called Feel Better, Live More. And he interviews people about resilience and you know how they've come through, through struggles in their time and how they've managed to turn it around. And he was talking to this guy called John McAvoy, um, who is a really interesting, very humble guy who got sent down for two life sentences into prison um and you know and he you know he, he knew that's what he deserved you know he, he he did wrong and he ended up going to prison and for the first year he ended up um being in his cell so for the first year he was in isolation so he didn't leave his cell for 23 hours a day he only left his cell for one hour and he said to himself and and, and this is something that i want to speak to you and ask you today is you know how can I come out of this better? How can I learn from this? How can I change my ways? And the one thing he did say was like, you know, when I come out of this and I press the play button, what do I want my life to look like? Do I want to go back to that same life? And I think that's a really, that's one of the biggest questions and one of the biggest challenges for all of us, you know, how do we you know, if you don't want to go back to that same life or, you know, how do you change that? You know, we're all making these new habits and behaviours um, or how do you make start making these new habits and behaviours? And I think one of the hardest things for that is is learning to sustain that. Um, you know, how do you not go back to, you know, the busy days and busy hours in the office? You know, how do you not go back to that? And I think that's where resilience comes in. And that's what I want to talk to you about today. Um, of being able to do that so what is resilience um because you know when i first started looking into resilience i had no idea really kind of what it was um so i just you know, want to go through some of the points today so resilience is a, it's our ability to bounce back from challenge it's our ability to be successful and happy it helps us to expand our ability to tolerate changes it's how we handle change and it's an inner strength that we can all call on in times of need you know, it means you know, that we cope better in life um, it means that we can face life's hardships with, with boldness and courage and it means being patient and never giving up and having that belief that nothing is insurmountable um, and so we don't get overwhelmed and I think sometimes when we do feel slightly overwhelmed it can be very easy especially at the moment to feel very powerless especially when we don't have control we don't feel like we have control and I and sometimes you know we can start doing things that you know aren't very good for us we have um, unhealthy coping mechanisms it might mean that you know we hide from problems you know some of us might maybe be drinking too much or smoking too much or having too much caffeine um or substance abuse or you know anything like that that you know we're trying to deal with these emotions because we don't know how to necessarily channel that we don't know how to overcome that and i think this goes back to my thing that i said towards at the beginning is about resilience you know we don't know how resilient we are until we know that we need you know we're in a situation where we need to be and I think, um, if I may, I'd really like to share my story um, about learning resilience. Um, and, you know, I, I 
take you back to when I was 24, 25. I was um, working for Mulberry, so I just um, just about to go out in front of the CEO of Mulberry, 150 international selling agents, editors, journalists, uh, to present the new women's wear ready to wear collection. And instead of kind of you know basking in the glory um, and you know the pivot of my career, I'd just come from working for Alexander McQueen. You know I had all this success at a very early age, um, and instead of you know basking in, in kind of this, this greatness and, and enjoying the position that I was in, I was freaking out. I was having a panic attack and I'd gone and locked myself in, in the toilet, in, in head office. Um, and I, you know, I was perspiring and my heart was pounding and, you know, I was just having a, a, a panic attack and, and a bit of a, you know, I just didn't know really what was going on. And I was, you know, saying to myself in the mirror, you know, I can't do this. You're going to be a failure. You're going to let everybody down. You're not good enough. Um, you know, you need you need to run. You know, you need to, to go. You, you can't do this, and, and all to, just to protect myself. And and actually, the only thing I knew how to kind of stop those voices and to, to kind of get control back was to make myself sick, which is what I did. Um, and you know, I knew that I had to I had to go out there. My assistant was knocking on the door saying, "Come on, Marie, everyone's waiting." Um, so I had to, you know, kind of redo my makeup. You know, made sure I looked presentable, and I went out. Um, and did did the presentation. It was fine. The CEO was really happy. Everyone was really happy. Um, but after that, I, I went home and I slept for like two days um, because I, I, I was struggling to cope. I was crumbling under the pressure and I, I was given a lot of responsibility very early on, but I didn't know anything about resilience. I didn't, you know, I didn't have mental toughness. I didn't know how to cope with with the stress you know we were designing you know being creative on on demand and, and crazy deadlines and not knowing how to say no and just saying yes to everything especially because I was quite junior um and I really wasn't coping um at the time and just to move on and I this is kind of you know a slide that, that I show people to how to try to explain you know I was trying to show to everybody else that I had this perfect life and I was fine and it was all under control um, and that's what I wanted people to see I wanted people to see this flawless image that I had my stuff together and I knew what I was doing um, but actually you know this this wasn't the reality of it you know and if, if you'd have you know say this this these flowers were you know in a stately home or something like that and you know and you have a little sign that says you know don't don't enter you know staff only and you go around the back and there's all this rubble and there's all these weeds and, and it's all piling up and all bits of dirt and stuff and that that was really what was going on that was that was the weeds in my life you know the, the craziness that was going on behind me trying to keep up this flawed image um and the weeds for me at that point was was bulimia i had a 15 year battle with anorexia and bulimia i was drinking over a bottle of wine a night you know i wasn't looking after myself i definitely wasn't eating properly you know i was perfectionist i didn't know how to say no i wasn't setting boundaries and, and you know and I, and I just couldn't cope with, with the pressures of life um and this led to me I don't know if any of you have heard of Ruby Wax, um, but she's amazing. Um, she's got a book out called How to Be Human. And she did a TED talk, um, which is brilliant. It talks about mental health and it's a very honest account of her own struggle with mental health. And actually, the, you know, the picture that she drew on her whiteboard was, you know, how I can explain it to people was that was my mind. That was my brain constantly all the time. I didn't know how to control those thoughts and, you know, that ne negativity and this kind of loop tape. You're not good enough. You're not good enough. And, and I was struggling. And I think also I didn't feel like I could put my hand up and ask for help. I didn't want to put my hand up because I didn't want people to, to think that I couldn't do my job properly. And I saw that as a weakness. You know, I wasn't brought up to ask for help um, in that way. And actually in the fashion industry at that that time, you know, the culture wasn't there, you know, you weren't allowed, you know, it was, it was almost a badge of honor that, you know, you work through lunch and you work these crazy hours, you know, it's kind of what you had to do. And I thought that's what you had to do to be successful. Um, and, you know, I ended up, um, relocated and this happened you know I was on like a every every few years I would go to a different job then I'd crash and burn and go to a different job and crash and burn and I ended up relocating to New Zealand for a head of design job and you know it didn't it didn't work out well I was running away me and my husband were running away um because I didn't realize it was me and that I could control the situation I just I think that's one of the things like today is you know sometimes you know I knew that I needed to change you know I'd cry myself to sleep every night with the basis that you know i you know, I, tomorrow would be different, I would change. But I think I didn't know how to change. I wanted to change and I didn't know how to change. And I think sometimes that's a really key thing. You know, some, some of you on this on this webinar might be thinking, you know, I want to make these changes, but I don't know how to. Um, and that can be the most hardest thing um, to do. 
Um, and anyway, um, I was in New Zealand. Um, I got made redundant. My boss was a bully. It was a complete nightmare. Um, and I ended up having a breakdown on this beautiful beach that I used to run on every day for five miles just to try and anchor myself um, with, with the craziness and trying to, to control, control how I was feeling. Um, and I, I, I just said to myself, do you know what? I can't do this anymore. I'm not going to do this anymore. Um, I don't want to live my life this way. There has to be a different way. There has to be a choice. Um, and I want that choice and I want it to be different. Um, and two days later, I got on a plane and we, we flew home. And so that's, you know, I came back to the UK to, to really recover. And that's kind of where the real hard work started. Um, and, I, and I learned how, to, how to, to thrive in a different way and how to manage myself and how to think differently. You know, I learned how to, you know, choose differently, focus differently and do differently. Um, and that takes time and that's hard, you know, and it's a slow process. It didn't happen overnight. Um, and it was, you know, something that I chose to do and now help other people to do. Um, so really, you know, that, that's my, my story and, you know, I, I couldn't afford professional help. So I had to really teach myself and I read and I listened and I watched and I practiced, um, all the ways that I could actually rewire my brain and learn to think differently and learn to live differently. And, you know, and it's just been such an amazing journey and I love being able to share how I've done that and how you can do that as well and how you can learn to flourish you know I'm not saying that every day is brilliant um but I definitely have much more joy in my life and and you know I feel much more in control um so that nicely leads me on to um sharing with you the six principles six principles of resilience and these are things you know that I apply to my life um these are things that you know talking to fashion experts, thought leaders, people that study resilience, you know, these are kind of the key things that can help you to flourish. And, and it's about, you know, rebuilding by design, not by, ch not by chance. You know, we have this opportunity. I think there's this really lovely thing at the moment where, you know, we all have the power to make the biggest and most positive change in our own lives. Um, and it's knowing kind of how to do that. Um, so, this are uh, these are things this is a collective like i said you know and um this is something that you can use kind of now you know right now in the next three to six months and also for the future as well so let's move on to uh yeah so what is what if there was a different way you know imagine a future where we all knew how to flourish you know how much more creativity would we see how much more risk taking how much more happy how much more purpose and joy would we see in our lives and it's about getting all of that back and reconnecting with all of that and using this time to to be become better leaders better businesses and better humans so let's start with number one so number one is be a witness um and this is be a witness in becoming aware of what you do you know how do you react how do you talk to yourself you know how do you um you know listen to you know we we don't necessarily have that awareness sometimes you know and i think some what's happened in the last few months it has really kind of made us very much focused in in the moment and being in the now and i think you know it's learning to be able to do that and be very mindful of what's happening around us you know we can can't necessarily control what's happening to us but we can control you know how we treat ourselves you know and sometimes you know some of the things I used to say to myself you know I just like god I'd never say that to my best friend or my, my mom or something like that so and I think you know it's 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 really learning that you know if you have a bad day that's okay and learning to sit with those emotions I think that's something that's that's always been really hard you know you put it to the back of your mind and think you know I, I should be getting on with this I should be able to cope but actually you know we're not you know, we have to learn these things, you know, we're not all resourceful or we don't have those resources or those toolkits yet uh, to help us, you know, and a good thing about resilience is it can be learned, it can be learned, and I never used to think that, which is brilliant, um, you know, and it's learned to sit with those emotions and not fighting it, you know, if you need to go and have a, have a sad day, go and have a sad day, if you're not feeling productive, um, you know, go, you know, put your pen down and go off for a walk or go, go and you know go and do some gardening because you know, it's subconsciously that's when your best ideas come and I think the nice thing at the moment is you know we have that ability to work from home um so we can um yeah just see my my connection has gone uh, but I think it's back um you know we can um you know reconnect with the different ways that we are living our lives you know and we can you know by working from home you know i can definitely have some time out you know if i need to go and sit in the garden and have my lunch that's what i'll do i think we've we've kind of 
been given that time back to be able to do that. And I think, you know, it's it's catching, you know, catching sight of all those beautiful, ordinary things, you know, the butterflies in the garden and the bees. I've got bees on my lavender and how beautiful that is and hearing the birds sing and, you know, just being really present because that can really help and kind of being at one with nature really helps us to sort of slow down and kind of really take our breath. And, and also being aware of our habits and behaviours. Like scientists believe that 98% of our behaviours um, are mindless and they're unconscious so we're doing it without actually really realizing and I think with habits you know when we're faced with challenge your habits will either create barriers or create big bridges so they create barriers or bridges and it's being mindful of you know what you're doing you know how are you reacting to things and I think this is you know this is decision that I take you know every decision I make is, is based on kind of my well-being and I think you know, the takeaway from this is, you know, be really mindful of the decisions that you're making. So if you're going to make a decision, is this going to harm you or is it going to help you? And I think that's really important because, you know, it's really prioritising. You know what it's like. And I think this is probably the key takeaway for this is learning to say no. But I think that could be much more powerful than saying yes. I know what it feels like when you say yes to something and you're like, oh, your heart sinks because it's not really something that you want to do. Um, and, it, and it's just learning that, you know, giving yourself permission um, to say no to things um, and doing the things that you, that you really want to do. I think with this time, it's, it's, it's been lovely to kind of have that reflection and think, like, where, you know, where do I want to take my business? Who do I want to work with? What clients do I want to work with? And what team, who do I want on my team? Um, it's been a really lovely thing. Um, so number two is willing acceptance. Um, this is basically willing acceptance of everything that is outside of your control. Like in times when there's so much we can't control, um, it becomes even more important to take ownership of what we can. Um, and, you know, when we do take control, this is where kind of the empowerment and the confidence comes from. And, you know, and this can be really hard to do, you know, sometimes, you know, at the moment, and especially during lockdown, you know, we haven't had control of whether we've been able to go out or whether our businesses have been shut or open. We haven't had that. And again, it's it's that balance. You know, how do you stay calm within that? Um, and it's, it's focusing what you can control. And there's, there's just a few stories that I want to share with you on this one is, you know, I don't know if any of you know of Terry Waite, um, who was kidnapped um, in the late 80s. Um, and he was uh, spent many years in, in, in captivity. And, and one of the things for him, you know, he, he basically had no control over, over his life. But in the first few weeks um, of when he was captured, he got to wear his own clothes. So what he would do is every night is he would fold his trousers and then put them under his pillow and then sleep on his pillow. So he pressed his trousers every night. So then when he woke up the next morning, you know, he, he felt great. You know, he had that confidence and, you know, he felt like he was in control. And that was just one tiny little bit that he managed to take back. And I think it's really looking at that in our own lives of what we have that control of and how we can do that. Going back to um, you know, John McAvoy, who I spoke about earlier, um, who was sent down for, for, for the prison, you know, two life sentences. You know, he had that one hour where he could go out and, and, and you know, and, and go out outside. But actually for those 24 hours, he was in his cell. You know, and what he did and what he chose to do, he had no control. He, he had a prison guard checking on him 15 minutes every 15 minutes um which is crazy it must must have been really insane but what he did every morning he got up and he did his exercises um, he read um and he could, took control of that situation and i think it's very similar to when i came back from new zealand um you know, i got made redundant i came back to the uk um and you know I, had, I was broke i had no money my marriage was in trouble i got divorced um and i had to start again and you know and i i i, I didn't have any control over over anything um, but what I did have control over was was what what I could control, you know, of applying for jobs, you know, keeping myself well and really thinking, you know, what are the three things that I can do today that will get me closer to my goal and that will really help me. The most important things, you know, I came back from New Zealand. I literally was, um, you know, I closed, closed the curtains and sort of slept for about three weeks because I was really embarrassed. I was really ashamed that you know, I couldn't cope and, I, and, and I, I was a failure and I'd let everybody down. And I think that's a really big thing of maybe why we don't share how we're feeling sometimes because, you know, that pain of, of letting other people in. Um, so I think it is, you know, it's really thinking about the three things. And for me, you know, that literally was, you know, I had to basically start from scratch. I couldn't make decisions or anything. You know, everything was so basic. So it was literally getting up, making my bed doing my skincare regime, cleaning my teeth, having my breakfast, you know, real basic structure, but actually all those really small basic things 
build up your resilience. It's the small things that make you much more resilient. Um, and that really helped for me. So the takeaway for this really is, you know, what is it for you? What are those three most important things that you know that you have to do every day um, to, to get you what you can do? Um, you know, whether it's phoning up a new client or speaking to a new buyer or whatever it is, um, because, you know, sometimes you can have a, a massive list and it can feel really overwhelming. Um, so just narrowing it down to those top three. And I think another thing for this is really about gratitude. Um, what I do every night, and this has really, really helped me, is, is I write down, and you could do it in the morning if you want, but I write down every, every night, you know, what are the three things that I'm grateful for and why? And also, you know, this really helps from a control aspect of, you know, three achievements. What, what three things have I achieved? And that's brilliant because, you know, when you're not feeling that great or you're having a bit of a tough day, you can go and reflect on that. Um, and that and also, you know, if you've really struggled during the day, you look back and go, do you know what? Yeah, I've achieved them. That's brilliant. You know, I feel really good. You can feel really good about yourself. So that's three. Uh, write down three gratitudes, what you're grateful for. And that could just be small things like, you know, you've had lunch with your mum or, you know, you, you've met with a friend or you've had a lovely phone call or you've gone for a walk. Or you've had a really nice conversation with a client. You know, all of that adds up. All of that kind of builds that resilience because you're doing stuff that you enjoy um, and that you want to do. And I think it's really trying to work out, you know, what makes you happy and what makes you sad um, and doing more of what makes you happy and kind of less of what makes you sad. Um, so number three. Um, is open your heart. Um, this is about honesty. This is about trust. And this is about connection. Um, you know, the first and most powerful thing that I did in in my recovery is um, was to be honest, be honest with myself. You know that I wasn't coping, that I needed some help. And then the second most powerful thing was you need to open up to friends and family and let them in. Um, you know, share my emotions, expose my vulnerabilities. Um, and, you know, and, and that's really tough. That's really tough to do. You know, I wasn't brought up in that environment. I wasn't brought up to show weakness and especially working in the, the culture within the fashion industry. It just wasn't something that you did. You know, it was almost like you had to get on with it. It was like stiff, stiff up a lip. But I've learned to, to, to do that and reconnect with people. And I think, you know, the best way to do that, you know, is because, you know, we need to let people in so they can catch us when we fall. And I think that's really, really important. Um, you know, and there there are moments, you know, especially in the last few 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 months, you know, where I've got, you know, it's, it's got too much or there's moments that, you know, I felt like I haven't been able to cope or, you know, it's all got too much for me. And knowing that, you know, I have, you know, people that I can connect with, people that I can, can talk with, you know, honestly, um, and have those kind of conversations has just been so supportive and has really helped me feel resilient and build that resilience during that time you know because it can be shameful to admit you know I'm not feeling well or I'm really struggling but actually people are out there and listening um and you know people don't recover in isolation I think you know a lot of us have got lots of emotions and things fears and things that we've been through in the last few months and you know to bottle those up sometimes isn't the best thing to do it's really good to, to let people in you know whether that's speaking with your your, your team or co-founders you know building up um, that network really of people that you can talk to. Um, so for me, you know, from this is for you, you know, who, who are you looking, who is looking after you? You know, I think sometimes we can really give emotional support to everybody else, but then who is it that, that's helping us? And I think for that is really forging those networks and, and friendships, you know, if you've got three, maybe, you know, one, two or three really key people that you can share your thoughts and emotions with. Um, and then, you know, who are you looking after? You know, I have certain friends um, and, and colleagues and clients actually that I work with that, you know, especially over the last few months, I've got in touch with them because I know that, you know, they might have been struggling or they might have need, needed some support. And I check in with them regularly because sometimes it's always the ones that make out they're doing OK. Nor nine nor, times out of ten, the ones that maybe aren't and they don't know how to be vulnerable and they can't feel like they can be vulnerable to ask for help so sometimes just reaching out and asking if they're okay or sharing you know something maybe that you're struggling with um it's nice to actually look on hives um you know uh, some of the posts and some of the articles about some of the brands and retailers and they're saying you know we are reaching out to other other brands and retailers and sharing you know sort of successes and failures and you know whip top wins and things like that and, and, and kind of building that community because we all kind of need that support and that really helps build resilience so number four, remember what you are fighting for. And for me, this is a really big thing because, you know, I don't want to go back to living the life that I lived before and I'll do everything that I can in my power not, not to do that. 
Um, you know, so this is about intention, about commitment and about purpose. You know, every decision I make is based on on my well-being. Um, but, you know, this has to be, you know, you're having a clear idea of what you want out of life, you know, your goals, your objectives and your purpose. And I think this, you know, this has been a time, some of us have had this time to reflect and go, you know, well, you know, why did I start my business in, in the first place? You know, what is it that gets me out of bed in the morning? You know, who do I want to help? Am I on the right path? Um, you know, what do I want to do more for myself? You know, how can I help myself? And I think it is that having that intent of, you know, what is it that you want? And then that discipline of you know having to care enough to do it you know I don't drink I've been sober for six years I gave up alcohol because it it wasn't doing me any good and I know I'm a better person because of it you know and every day you know I remember what I'm fighting for because I want to be a bigger and better stronger person and learn um and, and you know be able to show up and, and do webinars like this and, and and help other people um so I think it's you know it's really looking at you know what do you need to do on a base on a daily basis to get to where you need to be and, you know, when you do these small things every day, you're telling yourself you are worth it. You, know, you are worth it. It's that self-respect that, you know, I, even if it is, you know, I've started doing my yoga every night. You know, I feel great because I've done it because I've given myself some time if I've been busy during the day. You know, what is it for you? What are those small things? You know, and I think, you know, building resilience can be, you know, many of us feel like we are not enough or we're not good enough. or We don't like ourselves or we don't feel like we're worthy of loving and belonging um so you know we don't we find it hard to cultivate that resilience to stand up for ourselves but we are you know once you start doing this honestly it's, it's so amazing and you know you know that the feeling when you stand up for yourself or you do something for yourself just feels amazing if you could bottle that um and, and sell it it would you know it would be priceless um and i think you know really thinking that that for you is you know what is, you know, you are worthy. And I think, you know, what is it that you could do every day that's going to make you feel really good? Um, so moving on to number five is to nourish yourself. And this isn't just about eating well and exercising to keep well. And they're all really, really important. Um, I know with, with alcohol, our alcohol consumption has gone up massively over this time in the UK because people are, are drinking more, um, you know, to trying to cope and trying to numb you know, the feelings of, of, you know, where their business is going or what what is happening with life and, and, you know, almost numbing the fact that they don't have that control. And I've been there, I've done that, I know what that feels like and, and that's very easy to do and you can kind of form those kind of habits. But actually, nourishing yourself is much more about doing the things that bring you joy. You know, joy over to, collected over time fuels resilience. And it's really thinking about, you know, what is it that brings you joy? Um, I've seen some of the comments, people are talking about, gardening or weeding or spending time with their pet, their pets that they find really relaxing and I think that's so important to do you know because this does fuel resilience and I think again we've, we've been in this time and really reflected and gone you know what have we missed out that we realized that we need in our lives you know I've started listening to music I've started gardening I've started doing you know puzzles I absolutely love puzzles that's such a sad thing to admit but you know I started doing it because it really helps me to unwind and I love it and I love the challenge and you know and sometimes we think oh we get too busy we get too busy um but it's it's, it's time management and it's managing that time and I think it's about it is about discipline and about distraction um and sometimes we can be like oh well you know have that distraction we're too busy we've got the kids we've got this but actually the discipline you know we all have time in the day we can all find half an hour in our day to do some yoga or do some walk or read a book or do something that's really really going to nourish us and make us feel good and actually when you're doing stuff like that and you, you are you do have that joy um you know you feel so much happier you, you know you have so much more meaning you have much more purpose in your life and just helps you to kind of become a better person so you know really for this you know the takeaway for this is you know each day spend five minutes a day on your mind and your body and your heart. So for your mind, it, you know, it could be a, a puzzle or something that's challenging, a Sudoku, um, something that really, you know, that you love that maybe you've forgotten about doing that, you know, really taxes the brain and gets you to think in a really different way and help you switch off from the work that you're doing. Um, number two for the body, um, you know, do some yoga, do go for a run, go for a walk, actually. You know, I was talking to Neve earlier and she just, she moved into her new, new place where new village uh, where she where she lives and she said you know it's been really nice because she's been able to explore it a bit more during lockdown and you know go out and definitely for me I've been finding lots of independent cafes that I want to go and sit in and 
speaking more to my neighbors and things like that and you know doing things like that that's 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 really really good you know go out and, and if, you know i encourage you to to do that as much as you can and, and then number three with your heart you know and that could be you know phoning up a friend you know speaking to a friend you know getting you know having a really lovely conversation or you know meeting a friend for socially distanced coffee or picnic or things like that you know that connection you know we're driven by connection as humans you know it's part of our makeup um it's part of you know going back to the uh, the number three of opening your heart um so it's really important to nourish ourselves in in that respect and number six um is hope and optimism um you know hope is central to flourishing um you know it's a feeling of trust it's a security and it's a reason to keep going um i think sometimes when you know you can feel so stressed and quite overwhelmed it's really hard to see the hope from that um but you know it's having that understanding and this is where resilience comes from and maybe looking at some of the other five principles that we've gone from is, is to build that up um, so that you know, you know, when you go into challenges and when you go into crisis, that you know that you can cope and you can see that light at the end of the tunnel. And I think it's that understanding, you know, that times will be tough, but things will get better. And I know for me, you know, definitely increasing my re resilience and learning how to look after myself. You know, I have that hope. I know um, that things will get better. You know, I've been through crises in my life before and, you know, I now kind of have the tools to, to manage it and the things that I know that I need to do. To get myself through it um and you know it's 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 having that trust that you you know and i think that's where resilience comes from having that trust that if you're going into a challenging situation that you know that you can look after yourself and that you will be okay uh, you know having that belief that it, things are not insurmountable um you know i when i um started my recovery i signed up for the new york marathon um, and ran the New York Marathon, which was amazing. You know, it actually helped me really cure my bulimia because, you know, I couldn't train to run and, you know, run 10 miles a day and be throwing up, you know, 10 times the day before, which is what my life was like. Um, and, you know, I did nine months of training and, you know, that was hard, really, really hard. But, you know, I had that purpose and I had that intent and I had, you know, I knew what I was fighting for. And, but I never would have stood on that, on the start line if I did, didn't trust that I could do it I didn't trust that I put that work in and I put that training in I think it's the same with resilience it's almost like that resilience training that we can put ourselves into situations um where we we know that we you know we can cope and I think you know it's coming out and going yes you know I've got through that you know I can get through this I made it and that can be empowerment in in itself um and celebrating the, the, the small wins and I think it is having having that trust that you you know and having that hope and that optimism, you know, that, you know, you can um, push yourself, you know, you can push yourself out of your comfort zone, you can take risks, um, you know, you can learn to do things differently, because you know, you know, have that trust within yourself, um, that you can do it. And I think that's just so brilliant, and, and so powerful. And I think at the moment, um, definitely, with that, you know, it's very hard to see that kind of hope and optimism. And I think what I've been seeing is, you know, so many businesses, have been doing brilliantly of adapting and you know being flexible and really seeing new avenues of opportunity and i think sometimes with um crisis and with challenge you know it can bring that about it can bring that about and like i said you know it is we all have that power really to to make you know the biggest and most positive change and so for this one it's really about you know time you could you know time to rewrite the rule book for yourself um you know what is that hope what is what do you want to achieve you know where do you want to go um you know what what do you want to get out of life um and and giving yourself that that hope that you can go out there and achieve it um because it, this is you know this is an exciting time you know it's it, it's it's a, it's a good and, and a bad time you know i've definitely um seen the worst of it and i've seen the best of it in my business and kind of for me um but i can see that hope and i can see that hope because i've built up that resilience um so yeah, so I think um, they're the, the 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 six ones. So I've just popped them on a slide, really, because um, I I've delivered this this something similar to this before, and you know some my lists as I've gone along to, to write them down. So these are kind of the, the key six things um, to do. And I think you know just to just to finish, really, just to really share with you all that you know resilience can be learned don't forget that you know you can learn to build up resilience and you can learn to flourish you know this is all possible and change is possible and you can learn to live in a different way if you want to 
Um, you know, you are stronger than you think. You know, I think a lot of us have had found that real inner strength over this time. You know, we've done things, we've come out of comfort zones, we're doing running webinars, you know, for our teams, or we're doing virtual catwalks or virtual showrooms. You know, we are stronger than we think if we put our mind to it, you know. So kind of pat yourself on the back a little bit for that. And, you know, and it's it's learning to keep keep doing that and, and keep being able to have that resilience to then keep pushing yourself out of, out of your comfort zone. And, you know, and that gives us, you know, resilience gives us an all important sense of control um, and which helps you to, to flourish. And resilience is a spirit in all of us that's waiting to come out. Um, so thank you. Um, I'd just like to leave you um, with this last slide. So if anybody was inspired by this talk or would like to talk further or maybe is potentially struggling or, um, you know, would like some support with anything, then then please get in touch. Um, and yes, thank you very much. I think um, I'll hand back over to Nee because I know she's been monitoring the, the chat box. Um, if anybody has any questions or if we want to cover anything in more detail, then I'd be happy to do so. So thank you very much. And thank you to Suzanne and me for having me on board. And thank you for your time today. And thank you, Marie, so much. It was fantastic, your story. And I know I've heard it a few times and every time it's so moving. And I think it really, really helps people to be able to put those practices into their own lives. Um, we had a comment from Julia earlier that I think was really resonant and I'm sure will um, be something that a lot of people feel, which was that letting people in was hard. I'd been the one to support everyone until I burnt out and had to get help. And I know you were talking earlier about how it was difficult to put your hand up and say you needed help when you don't want people to judge you or assume that you're not good at your job or anything like that. So how would you say you could build bravery to put your hand up and let people know how you're feeling? Yes, I think I think it's learning for yourself that that's what you need to do. And I think if, if you're at that point where you feel like you're burning out and you need that support, then's the time to really do it. Um, and it's finding somebody to have that conversation with or to, to share that experience, you know, for you to talk to. I think that could be really, really hard. You know, I'm working with, with different businesses and teams at the moment where, you know, they even if they're leaders or even if they're teams, you know, they don't feel like they can speak to their boss or speak to their co-founders about how they're really feeling or they're burnt out. Because, again, there's that fear that, you know, people don't think they can do your job properly. You know, I didn't officially come out about my you know, struggles with mental health and my eating disorder until I started working for myself um, because I didn't want companies, really, you know, I didn't want people to kind of tilt their head and go, oh, God, you know, okay, and, and treat me any differently. I think that's really, really hard. But I think that's something that we need to overcome um, within our cultures and within our businesses where it's acceptable um, to not feel okay, you know, to be able to phone up your business and say, you know, I can't come in today because my brain's sick, you know, to be able to move that conversation forward um and i yeah i think it is it's reaching out to somebody that you you know can help um and it might not be it might not be you know your boss or your team or your co-founder it's it might be somebody else that you need to share that with um you know that you, you can seek you know counseling or you know get in, in touch you know somebody like myself that's out there and talking about it and you know can be signposted a certain way but it is hard it is really hard but i think once once you've decided that you don't want to live your life like that and you want to change i think it's then being brave enough um to be able to do that and there's a really good book um an amazing lady called brene brown um who is a shame researcher and she looks in vulnerability and she has a a TED talk, which I recommend everybody to, to watch, talk about the power of vulnerability. Um, and that is very much about, you know, why why we're not vulnerable, why we don't open up and how we can actually lead better and have more courage in our life. And that's a really hard thing to do. Um, but I think once you have that recognition yourself, I think once you can be vulnerable and ask for help, then I think that's when, when the power comes. And I think, you know, it's some people might not, resonate with that um and then potentially you know they're not the people that you want in your life or you know if your company's not going to help you with that then potentially you know that's maybe not someone that you need to work with i think it's, it's i think it's having that understanding and i think sometimes in businesses we or just as general we don't necessarily have the understanding of how we can help people whereas i'm very much very much passionate about how you can help yourself 
I hope that answers the question. It definitely does. Thank you so much, Marie. We have another question um, for, from Rachel who asks, are there any tips or things to help how you discover what it is you want? I'm staring at that blank page with no idea how to answer the question, what it is I want. Yeah, I, yeah, that's a hard one. I think that's a really hard one because, you know, I, I came back from New Zealand and I had my breakdown and, you know, I was all, I had that blank page and I, I had, I could restart, I could, could restart my life and, but I didn't know, you know, I had, I didn't know what my identity, my identity was, was bulimic and, and anorexic and being a fashion designer and suddenly I wasn't any of those things. Um, and I think that's really hard and it's, it, you have to do that real soul searching of, you know, what, who you are and what you're about. And I think it's a question of trying things. Um, you know, I started doing a dance class because I used to love dancing as a kid. And I was like, oh my God, I absolutely love it. In my forties doing a dance class. But you know, it's, 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 I think it's, it's learning, um, giving yourself permission to go out and try new things. You know, think back maybe to when you were a kid, what did you love doing as a kid? Um, you know, cause we, we forget that we, we fall out fall out of favour, we get too busy and we forget what really makes us joy. And I think maybe for that is maybe having, doing a list, like I said, of what makes you happy and what makes you sad. Because we don't tend to think about that. We don't tend to think about those things in so much detail because we do get busy with our lives and we do things that we think we have to do, um, but we might not necessarily want to do, um, especially as a kid sometimes, you know, we have to do that. But when we become adults, you know, we have a, we can have our own choice, we can decide. And I think definitely it is, you know, have a list of what what make, what brings me joy, what makes me happy, and do more of that. Um, but yeah, it's, it's a it's a tough one, and I think it, it, it is very very soul soul searching. Um, but I think it's it's learning a lot about yourself. It's working out what makes you tick, what makes you happy, um, to then be able to to help other people. You know, I found we found my purpose in life because you know I wanted to share my story and help other people. To learn how to flourish you know and not have this life that was really miserable and unhappy and um you know I, I felt like I was happy at the time and I felt for me that's what success looked like but it was nowhere near what I wanted it to be you know I, I'd wanted to be a fashion designer since I was eight years old and then when you get that and it's not what you think it's going to be and it isn't what you think it's going to be that's really hard um to, to, to for that to that kind of realization to then rethink you know well actually what is it um you know what is it that, that I want out of life and I think that that's really cutting it back to the basics you know where, where do you want to live who do you want in your life what job do you want to do who do you want to help who do you want to inspire what legacy do you want to leave behind um you know is is, 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 a, is a massive is a massive thing and you know we never really probably take a step back um and really have those conversations with ourselves and I think it is having those honest conversations with ourselves and those tough conversations with ourselves of what we want out of life. Uh, so take a step back, you know, plan some time in your diary for a few hours and go, right, you know, what is it? So that would be my, my suggestion. And someone's just popped up and said, sorry, who was the TED speaker? I was just um, about to say. <laughs> um, it's Brené Brown, um, B-R-E-N-E uh, Brown. Um, if you look her up, I mean, it's the most top 10 watched TED talk. Um, and it's it's very fascinating. I've had I have three of her four books, um, and it's really you know really helped me you know learning about shame and vulnerability, asking for help, help, but how that can make us more uh, courageous in life and make us more bold. And I think for me, you know, definitely the more I share my story, the more open I am, um, you know, the more courageous I feel because you know I it can resonate with people, and you know if I can help just one person on on this call or you know maybe think differently about their life or the choices that they have then you know that's I'm eternally grateful for that. Great and I completely agree with that too. We have a question from Billy which I think will resonate with a lot of our audience and he asks what is your advice for switching off? I get really anxious that I'm not working hard enough now I have my own business so I find it really hard to give myself time off or have a night away from emails, social media etc without feeling guilty or that my business will fail if I'm not switched on 24-7. Yeah, that's a really good question. It's so hard, isn't it? When you run your own business, and I know this, you know, there's always something to do. Um, so it's really, really hard to switch off. And I know the guy um, that founded Calm. Calm is a really good um, app. Um, it, it's, um, but the founder, um, Michael Acton-Smith, 
you know, he founded it because he was a, he was a startup and he was an entrepreneur and he hit burnout. Um, and I think with, with startups, that's one of the the key things. If you go on any thread with any sort of founder or, but you know, it's all about mental health and burnout, fear of failure, um, you know, because the competition is so strong. It's really, really hard. Um, but I think it's really important. You know, it's the same as like training, training for a marathon. You know, the rest days are just as important as, you know, the, 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 the training days. Um, so I think it's important to set yourself boundaries um, of, you know, when you're going to work and be much more productive in the time that you have. Um, routine is really good um, for this, you know, making sure you have a set routine. Um, so then you have, you know, you stop work at a certain time and go, right, you know, I'm going to go and do this and I'm going to go and watch a film or I'm going to go see a friend. Um, because then, you know, you have that time to switch off and you have that time to um, recuperate. Um, I think there's always that danger when you're in your 20s, you're like, yeah, I'm going to work, I'm going to work, I'm going to work because, you know, I can rest later, you know, in my 30s and 40s. Um, but if you do that, you're just going to burn yourself out, you know, and, and you'll spend you know, five, 10 years recuperating and your business will fail. Um, so I think it's and I think it's learning to be very productive in the right way um, and, and constantly taking a step back and, and potentially having people to, to soundboard against. Um, you know, I've definitely found that in my business where you'll end up going off on a tangent um, and you have to really sort of bring yourself back and go, you know, what is the most important thing? What is it that I'm trying to do? Um, and, and, and probably trying to find, you know, the best way to do that. Um, procrastination is a massive thing. I'm I'm very guilty of that, um, but it's you know it's just being tough with yourself. I think and just setting yourself those boundaries. I think that's really really important um, because we don't do that, and especially between sort of personal and work, it's very easy for them both to blend. Especially when you're working from home as the, as well, because your office you know might be in your dining room or whatever. It's very very hard to switch off. And I know with businesses they're they're finding that with their teams where they're working harder than ever. But especially when you run your own business, it, it is tough. But you have to, you know, even taking a day out for me, you know, if I take a day out, it's not feeling guilty about it. I think that's really, really hard to feel guilty by not working. Sat in your house and thinking I should be doing something. But giving yourself permission to, to put your pen and close your Mac or close your computer and go off. Because actually I come up with some of my best ideas and I can come back to my desk the next day and I'm refreshed and I'm ready to go and I'm much more productive. So I think it is being kind to yourself um and yeah i think that's that's you know it's, it's very hard i know what, it, what it's like trying to run your own business but i think you have to set those boundaries otherwise you'll burn yourself out and and um and, and really look after yourself as well um and be honest with yourself and with others um is my is my advice so i hope that answers your question Right. I think that's an absolutely wonderful way to end the webinar. I think that's all we've really got time for today. I do just want to say thank you again from all of us. I think there's quite a few people in the chat who have said, you know, this is what they needed to hear today and um, you've really helped them. And I think it's lovely to know that you're not the only person feeling a certain way. And, you know, this is something that we all need to work on. So thank you very, very much from all of us. Um, and uh, have a lovely rest of the day, everyone. Thank you for joining. Thank you so much. Bye. Bye.